Welcome to Milton, back to Milton High School. We're here for the varsity game. That was a lovely rendition of the national anthem. Those are uh, two members of the Milton chorus. Um, they normally come out with five, but they're a little short-handed tonight. Jerry, um, a nice job, huh? well, rendition. Uh, we're looking at the starting lineups here for Milton. It's going to be uh, senior captain number 42, Steve Cunningham, and senior captain number 30, Chris Potts. It's nice to see Chris back in the lineup. He's been struggling with an ankle injury. Yeah, hopefully uh, he's back 100%. That'd be hard to believe, but uh, hopefully he is. Uh, other starters are uh, Brian Travers, a senior, number 20, Marcus Burke, a junior, number 22, and uh, Adam Donovan, a freshman, number 41. We'll set the Wellesley players for you as we go along here. Uh, Wellesley looks like uh, they've got one tall player. That's number 50. That's um, David McWilliams, a six foot five inch um, junior. But other than that, they look like they go pretty small. I'm looking to see an up-tempo defensive game probably from them. Maybe a quick passing game based on what we saw in the junior varsity game, Jerry. I wouldn't be surprised if you see the same offense. It's looking like the same offense right now already. Right. They ran a... Uh, 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 passing it around the three-point line and cutting back, cutting off the screens. And it looks like the same offense being run here. Now we do have the 30-second clock right, for the varsity right. game. And a pick, pass picked off by Chris Potts. Takes it in strong, goes up, gets the hoop, and it counts. Very strong, strong move, start, yeah. very strong. I didn't see any uh, signs of the ankle injury there. No, I looked pretty quick on that one. Let's set the rest of the Wellesley players for you. That's foul. Uh, uh, I didn't say it. Number 11 is um, Captain David Fiorello. Number 3 is uh, Captain Mark Flynn. Number 23, Captain Jimmy uh, Costello. And number 10, uh, Kevin O'Neill. Marcus Burke picks up um, Costello. Costello out on the wing. They're still moving around the outside. That's Fiorello. Jump shot by O'Neill is good. Well, you'd expect with the size, small size, that there'll be an outside shooting team. Yeah, unlike the uh, JVs, they uh, they look like they might be taking the outside shot from that offense. Good strong take by Marcus Burke for the hoop, and Milton's up 5-3. Fiorello kicks it over to uh, O'Neill, back out top. O'Neill. Costello with a three. That's a round and out. A good rebound by Chris Potts. Good uh, elevation there. Yeah, they also had uh, Cunningham and uh, Donovan had their guys sealed off very nicely. Allowed Potts to come right in and grab that rebound. Marcus Burke took it strong to the hoop again, and he uh, picked up the foul. Uh, that's the first foul on uh, McWilliams, and he really looks to be most of the size on this team. They do have another... Um, Flynn is uh, listed as 6'3", but frankly doesn't look that tall. Burke in the wing, Ryan Tr Brian Travers. Milton running the right side. Potts uses the pick by Steve Cunningham. They drop it into uh, Adam Donovan at the foul line. See what kind of an offense Milton's trying to establish here. 
They post up Adam Donovan. Spins, but he's going to get called for the travel. One extra move there. Yep. He's got a good size advantage on um, on Flynn. As I say, Flynn's listed at 6'3", yeah, but just looking at him standing next to uh, Donovan, I'd say Donovan's got a couple inches and certainly uh, some weight on him, so he should be able to overpower him maybe down low. O'Neal out to um, Costello. Another three-pointer. Good box out, but they can't get the rebound. Yeah, Wellesley. long rebound off that three-point shot. So far, that's all Wellesley's done is shoot the threes. Right, Fiorello, no good, rebound, off, and taken down by Adam Dunneman. Steve Cunningham kept it alive, and Dunneman took it down. Chris Potts tries to take it by Costello. Finds Dunneman at the foul line. Good idea to try yeah, to exchange down idea. low, but he couldn't, uh, the ball didn't come up high enough. Yeah, just a little too low for the big guy there. It'll be interesting to see if, you know, if, if uh, Wellesley can make some of those three-pointers. That's going to force the Milton defense out further, and then that may open up the backdoor cuts. But until they make them, it does, and there's another three-pointer. That one's no good. That one was uh, Fiorello with Marcus Burke. Yeah, with this offense, too, I don't see uh, Wellesley getting too many offensive rebounds. Chris Potts with a three. That's no good. But right there for the rebound, Steve Cunningham. Wellesley got hurt on that one. That shot didn't catch any iron. And as a result, it came right down to the floor with Steve Cunningham. Was Steve had a nose for the ball on that one. That foul is going to be called on Brian Travers as O'Neill drove hard to the hoop. And Travers was riding him a little bit down the side. Into the game is number 44. That's Nick Ravito. I remember him from last year. Um, very looks, strong. Yeah, looks familiar. Very strong shooter, but um, we'll see. He had a bit of a travel problem on some of his moves. That's Costello. Another three-pointer. That one's no good off the front rim, and Brian Travers right there for the rebound. Marcus Burke takes it in strong, puts it up and in. Very nice, strong right in, a move by and Marcus. Burke has had, had a very strong start to the game. He's, he's a good leaper, a good strong inside player for an outside, for a small guard. Yeah, as soon as he got the ball, he made a strong move right by his guy. O'Neill to Costello, Flynn up top, Ravito. Once again, everything's outside. There's another missed three pointer. Good box out by Marcus Burke, comes up with the rebound. He's going to wait Finds for the Potts. offense. Yeah. Potts has got a good, uh, I'd say a good four or five inches on Ravito who's covering him. You might want to think about posting him up. Steve Cunningham at the foul line. Finds Brian Travers over on the wing. Oh, nice pass by Brian Travers. Can't get it to go, but Steve Cunningham up and in. Good work by Steve. And a quick timeout by Wellesley. Nice start by the Milton Excellent Wildcats. Excellent start. The best start of the season for them so far. And you know, it looks like they have an inside advantage. If they can get the ball up on the rim, even if it doesn't go in, uh, with Adam Dunham and Steve Cunningham and Chris Potts under there, they're going to get a fair, sh a fair share of rebounds. Yeah, distinct advantage there. The other thing, too, is... Um, and I, I don't have the stats, but I'd say if Wellesley's probably taken six shots. They've all been three-pointers. And they've made them. just the one. And if they can start making those three-pointers... I think they've all been from the same spot on the floor, yeah. too. They, uh, they haven't even really looked inside for anything. They must not have any uh, low post play going for them. Yeah, but you, I mean, I think you've got to, uh, at least, even if it isn't your big man, yeah. you've got to try to make something happen inside. Or the, or the defense is just never going to have to respect that. And so we got an 11-3 score here early in the uh, in the going. The Milton Wildcats in Bay State League action are um, off to a 1-2 and two start, I believe. Is that right, Jerry? Yes, that's correct. They've uh, lost this to Dedham and a tough loss to Walpole. Tough loss, yeah. And they've beaten Weymouth. Yeah, lost a tough one to Dedham in the, uh, the opening game. It's a game they could have had. A game they could have had, and then uh, when they get Dedham back here on the home court, it should be an interesting matchup. Walpole is just too tough. I mean, they're just, uh, they beat Charlestown. They, they beat Charlestown the in a Christmas tournament, 60-51. Uh, to 51. Uh, and Charlestown's expected to contend for Division Two. Well, there's Costello right down with another three. Good job by Marcus Burke to grab the rebound. They didn't even make a pass that time. He no. just came down and shot. Firing away. Oh, good look. Good look by Adam Dunneman. 
You know, they've set Adam up at the uh, at the foul line, and they're running the offense through him and pick and running people back door down low. Yeah, picks good, down low. Good passer. Very good passer. But, uh, he's just a freshman and, uh, you know, expect some four good years of basketball. Bodes well for him and Milton. Into the game is number 22 for Wellesley. That's uh, Darrell Warren, a 5'11". Well, Wellesley's gone from small to even smaller. They took out their big man because he got his uh, second foul at 6'5", and they put in somebody 5'11". This kid's a shooter. Chris Potts. Swings it over to Brian Travers. Drives it in strong. Potts. Good ball fake. Jumper. Off the rim. No good. Ball loose. Comes right to Steve Cunningham for an easy putback. Yeah, Qu Steve, Steve did what he should do with it. Right back up with it. And he credited Adam uh, Dunham on that kept one. Kept that one alive. alive. He tapped it right to him. So far, Milton's done a lot of its damage off the offensive boards. I'm going to see if Wells even gets the ball inside the three-point line. That's another three-pointer. Got a good piece of it, but I think he might have yeah. hit him after the foul, after foul the on block. Marcus Burke. Um. Uh, when we have this quick break in the action, thanks again to uh, Ricky Regan and Alamat Productions for uh, putting this on for us, doing all the hard work behind the scenes, the camera work, the uh, production work, and uh, working with the Milton Cable TV folks to get it on TV for you. Hope you're enjoying it. Shark rack color and play-by-play -play analysts. I don't know about that, but cracked maybe. <laughs> First one is around and good by Costello. Second is also good, and he's going to get three because, uh, as with all of the Wellesley shots, he was shooting a three when he got fouled. Makes yeah, it Marcus did get a nice piece of that, but it looks like on his follow-through, he might have got him on the arm. And that makes it 13 to 6. Well, you know, they must be better shooters than they've shown so yeah, far. Yeah, if they're going to live and die by the three, uh, they've got to be shooting better than that. So you got to expect some of those to start to fall. And a three-second call on Marcus Burke. Brian Travers had a nice move going there yeah. down to the left side of the lane. But you know, um, Offensively, Milton's run into a little uh, stall here. Ten minutes to go here in the first half. 13-6 to six in favor of the Wildcats. Wellesley Raiders moving around the perimeter. Levito out top. Down low to uh, Costello. Warren with a jumper. That was their first two. And they cut it to 13 to 8. Yeah, I tell you, if the uh, Milton players had been watching that whole JV game, they would have seen this whole offense. Adam Dunham and the two big men out top. Try to get it low to Brian Travers. Knocked out of bounds by uh, Flynn. Excuse me, by um, O'Neill. And it will stay Milton ball. Pass yeah, got there a little late. That's a long pass, though, from way out top good, near the three-point line. Good defensive pressure as well. Chris Potts back to Adam Dunneman. Dunneman goes up, and he gets hit. Foul's going to be on uh, Warren, number 22. I may be wrong, but other than Flynn, who's listed at 6'3", and to my way, it looks to be about 6'1", and possibly Costello, they don't, I don't think they have anybody over six feet on the floor for Wellesley. And the interesting thing, Jerry, is that they don't they don't really press either. No, they haven't been. They haven't shown any real speed. Okay. And when I saw them warming up, that's sort of what I expected, that they, you know, with a small team, that you'd see them up in the Milton faces. Flynn manages to track down that But they're region. hanging around, yeah. It's only 14-8. Rovito in the corner to Costello. O'Neill. Back to Rovito. We're down to five seconds on the clock. No good in the rebound by Brian Travers. Now they had to force that one up. The shot clock caught him. Good slicing move by Marcus Burke, yeah, but he can't get, get it, it to fall. fall. <laughs> Marcus has very good body control. Manages to find his way through. Here comes a shot. Huh? Rovito with a ball fake. Kicks it back out. Shot is no good. Chris Potts with a good one. Came flying from the foul line. Yeah, well, he doesn't seem to be any, uh, have anybody crashing those offensive boards as yet. 
Well, they're all out by the three-point line. It's hard to crash the boards from yeah. out there. But even right. that two guys in the uh, on the blocks there don't seem to be making the getting the job done. Brian Travers gets called for the travel. This game's moving right along. We're eight minutes in already. Rick, I don't think we're going to have any trouble with the uh, 60-minute tape on this one. Although I said that once before and I was wrong, so. I get the sense, though, if uh, Wellesley starts hitting from outside, they'll be in this game. There's, a, there's an offensive rebound as Ravito pulled one down. Going to get a new 30-second clock. Ravito snuck in underneath on that one. <laughs> Pick up the rebound. Looks like he takes up a lot of space underneath. He's not too tall, but he's, he's a, a wide body. He's a wide body. Good block by Adam Donovan. Yeah. They shouldn't be getting the ball uh, in that spot, Bad. though, not on an inbounds pass. That's a tough call. This referee's out in midcourt, 45 feet away. The other referee's standing under the hoop and, and uh, calls it a clean block. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, I think they really should have let that kid get the ball there to begin with. Shot is up, no good. A little uh, poetry there as Warren missed the foul shot. That foul was on Steve Cunningham. That's his first and the team's third. Yeah, uh, cameraman's blood pressure starting to rise here a little. I don't know. Now, following Ricky's time-trusted rule that the referee ought to be able to prove he played a little basketball, I'm not sure about that referee. He, he looks like he could pop a vessel in his head one of these days soon. Steve Cunningham with the outside jumper is good. Now, Steve has that kind of range. You really ought to look for that. Because he'll be able to get that shot over anyone that's covering him. They Absolutely. don't have anyone close to his height. And it's 16-9 to 9 in favor of the Milton Wildcats. I would think you might be able to pick... Oh, there's a travel that doesn't get called. Another travel that doesn't get called. Ravito puts it up, no good. And right there for the rebound is Steve Cunningham. <coughs> Chris Potts with the open three. Off the back iron. That one looked good, though. It was a good stroke. Yeah, it was a wide open look. Ravito drives it in, but he gets called for the yeah, charge. Potts had himself set up there. Took the charge. Nice play by nice Potts. Nice job. You know, you know, as many times as I have said things about the umpires, that, I mean the referees, that guy right there that just called that play is one of the best in the league. He's, a good, he's, he's done a nice job so far. He does a good job in the football referee. Well, he didn't call that play underneath the basket. There was a reason for it. Marcus Burke over to Chris Potts on the left wing. Oh, he drops it under to Steve Cunningham who gets fouled. Nice pass by Chris Potts to find Steve underneath. Yeah, and Steve got up there and got it and got the foul. You know, it looks like... Um, a lot of those Wellesley passes around the perimeter, they're the kind of passes that are exposed passes that could be picked off if, if you anticipate it. I mean, they, they, they make the same pass every time. Yeah, if you, if you see it coming, you're gone. You might get it, and yep. if you can pick one off, you get a couple of easy hoops. Marcus yep. Burke comes out, Bobby Ranton uh, replaces him. Same inbound play as last time. Right to Adam Donovan for same an easy Same results. Two. And maybe we ought to throw the ball out of bounds off their legs and get a few more uh, inbounds plays. Yeah, getting it open, uh, wide open parts at the foul line, and he's been dumping it down low to Adam. Milton has a nine-point lead. 6.45 left to go here in the first half. Ravito kicks it over to uh, Warren. Costello with a two-pointer. No good. Rebound by Ravito. He's done had a couple of offensive rebounds down there. And Wesley resets the offense. There's Warren. Costello. Costello finally gets one to go. He's, I think that might be his first three. And it's 18 to 12. Six point game. Adam Dunneman goes down the baseline. Nice job to get it into Steve Cunningham for two. The two big guys work together well there. Steve got it over the front of the rim there. Crawled right over. Adam took it down the baseline and he got double teamed so he knew Steve had to be open and did a nice job of a uh, little bounce pass in under the hoop. I don't think Steve's missed a shot yet. That's the best. Some of the... Now, I think Costello made the one, and he got a little confident. He took about a, that was about a 22-footer on that one. That'll 
be uh, two shots at the line for uh, Flynn. Flynn did a good job getting that offensive rebound there, put himself to the line. Steve Cunningham comes out for a well-deserved rest. I've got Steve for probably six or eight points in the first half. Yeah, I don't think he uh, missed any of his shots on the floor. He's replaced by um, senior Corey Rezenz. Second shot is up and good by Flynn. It's a seven-point lead for the Milton Wildcats. Bobby Ranton running the show up top. Good job by Brian Travers to save that ball. Adam Dunneman takes it in strong. Nice touch by the big guy. He's just too strong for anybody Wellesley has to put on. Yeah, Brian did a good job of finding him. I had to believe Brian knew he was going to be there because uh, he spun around and just let the ball go to him. 11 comes in off the bench. That's uh, Fiorello. Fires up a three-pointer right away. Oh, nice job by Chris Potts to slash into the hoop. And he gets it to go. I told, you, I told you last game that uh, these young kids, they recover quickly. It's, uh, yeah, I tell you, when he went down on that ankle, I thought he could be done for the it, season. It didn't look good. I was in pain just watching yeah. him. I'm done for the season. And that, I just sprained my ankle. I'm out for two months. <laughs> out from what? <laughs> and that uh, gives Milton's biggest lead of the game as we look at the cheerleaders down on the floor. 24 to 13 in favor of the Wildcats. Quite a large uh, squad there, 17 yeah, I counted. I was having trouble counting in the JV game, but I think I got that one right. Well, uh, we were talking to athletic director Tom Hergett before the game, and um, he was saying they're going to have some of the uh, Bay State League cheerleading co uh, competitions over here at the new field house. That'll be a good uh, a good take to come and see. I know some yeah, of these, these squads really work hard. Very athletic. It's like a gymnastics competition almost. Let's see. Well, now this is... Uh, see what Wellesley can do here. See if they find any offense for themselves. Into the game is number 33 for Wellesley. That's uh, Ray Mooney. Strong drive by uh, O'Neill, but he couldn't get it to go. He ran into big Adam Donovan, who shut off the lane. Forced him to walk, but uh, he got away with it. Fiorello to Costello. Uh, Costello. And he, make, he makes that one. Well, I got Costello at about two for ten in the first half here. Wellesley's picking up the defensive intensity a bit here. And it produces a turnover. They're working hard in the defensive end. Flynn tries to go baseline. Brian Travers shuts him off. Well, O'Neill got that shot to go, and then Chris Potts got him on the foul through. And he's going to have a chance for a three-point play, and Wellesley could cut this down to six. Yeah, he made... Uh, made <coughs> What you benefited from a nice screen there. Also now, I think they're using the ball fake a little bit on the three-point shot. Milton's, uh, because they've shot so many of them, Milton's respecting the threes and maybe going off their feet a little bit and they're taking it to the hole. Can't get that one to go. But Flynn controls the rebound out top. And gobbled up by the Milton defense there. O'Neill to Mooney. Fiorello, back to Costello, O'Neill and Mooney. Costello with another jumper, that's a three and that's good. Well, you figured some of those would start to go. Five straight points there. Marcus Burke back into the game, tries to get the ball down low to Adam Dunneman. A little too hard and Adam couldn't handle it. Key stretch here for the Wildcats. Yeah, a small uh, Wellesley lineup's got himself back into it here. Good job by Bobby Ranton to shut off the drive. Costello over to Mooney. Costello's hot. And he gets another one. Costello's really heated up after I criticized him for his shot yeah. stretch. And they've cut the lead to one. 
Well, uh, w uh, Milton had his biggest lead of the game at 24-13, and uh, Wellesley's rattled off 10, 10 straight points here. Ryan Travers having a little trouble getting it in. Great defensive pressure by Wellesley. A quick squad in there. Oh, Corey resents on the baseline. Fakes the three. Nice dish to Adam Donovan. And a three, three second call. I don't know, the uh, Milton offense has slipped a lot since Steve came out of the game. Well, they brought both Steve and Chris Potts out, and I think that takes away quite a bit of their offense. I think Adam, Adam Dunham is a lot more effective with Steve out there. You're having the two big guys. And of course, Potts would open it up for either one of them. O'Neill with a drive, comes up short. Ryan Travers with a rebound. No good. Rebound by Adam Donovan. And a foul called on Mooney. Looks like Ryan Travers got hit in the head on that. A previous yeah, they, rebound. That should put Adam on the line for one-on-one. -on -one. Well, they must have heard us, Jerry, because uh, Chris Potts and Steve Cunningham are coming right back into the game. Okay. I think they have a live feed at the bench there. Yeah, yeah. Looks like uh, Steve's not in yet. He's going to be coming in for Adam Dunaway. Yeah, Adam's been in the whole game. He's going to need a rest. Adam cannot knock it down, and Milton stays in the dry spell. Again. They've gone a good three, couple of three minutes here without a point. There's Costello, who's been the hot shooter. Some of those nice cuts that we saw in the JV game out of this offense. That's actually the first one they've used in yeah. the varsity game. Chris Potts drives hard and he's going to get the foul call on Mooney. Mooney was riding him down the, excuse me, on Costello. Yeah, Steve will get in after the, here he comes now. The one on one for Chris Potts. Well, they've been running all those cuts, but that's really the first time they've produced a first, basket out of it. First time they've actually uh, given it to that guy. Part of it is, you know, with Costello heating up, you've got to respect him as a shooter. Chris Potts gets the shot to drop. And when you respect him as a shooter, that opens up the passing lane a little bit. So let's see if uh, Wellesley starts to run its offense on the wing through Costello. Looks like an illegal screen on Wellesley. Legal screen on uh, number 11, Fiorello, as uh, he tried to pick off Marcus Burke coming around on the... This Wellesley offense is very screen-oriented, so... Uh, Pretty tame screens compared to what we saw in Dedham. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, there's no blood out there yet, yeah. is it? And uh, Marcus Burke will go to the line, one one Tie game here, 25 off. Minute 58 left to go in the first half. Marcus drops down the first one. I like to think, Ricky, you and I get a little credit for Marcus making that foul shot. Second one around and also it. That's the pass you can maybe anticipate and pick off right there. A cross-court top of the key pass. Oh, nice block by Chris Potts. But the follow by um, O'Neill is good. But Chris Potts got all ball on that one. A little unlucky, it rolled right to O'Neill. Yeah, I think he could have been called for traveling too as that last step down the lane. Well, Wellesley's got the up-tempo game going here a little bit. Putting Chris, some offense off the Chris defense. Chris he might have got fouled down the other end. I think they got guys running at him now, now that they know what he's capable of doing. Well, maybe he's got to look down. If he beats his man, takes it to the hoop, drop it down low to Steve Cunningham. Shot is around and in by uh, Flynn. He's going to start getting a quick double. That's the first lead of the game, I think, for uh, Wellesley, 28-27. 
Good job by Marcus Burke to keep his dribble alive, but then it gets knocked out. I think if he uh, looked for a shot there, then maybe dump it down to Steve. An easy hoop for Steve Cunningham. I'm telling you, the out-of-bounds plays have been our uh, best offense. As they just dropped it in low to him. He spun around his defender and dropped in the lay-in. They really don't have, if they can get him one-on-one -on -one against uh, the quote-unquote big guys for Wesley, they don't really have a matchup. Good idea by Mooney, but he hit a little, a little too yeah. much mustard and a little too low on that pass. Good penetration there. <laughs> Marcus Burke can't get it to go, but it goes off of uh, Wellesley and it'll stay Milton Ball. Uh, I think if, you know, on that play, if Marcus can make that drive, what happens is the, the man comes off of uh, Steve Cunningham, a little drop down there. I think that's an easy hoop. See how they're doing this inbounds pass, yeah. We've seen that play before. This time, uh, Potts took the shot. Good work by Steve Cunningham. And I think Chris Potts hasn't practiced in a while. He looks a little rusty on the jumper. And, and you know, the bad ankle probably probably hurts a little too. Costello. Probably one of those things that felt Back good the Costello. first five or ten minutes. Well, as you're looking to hold for the last shot, I think. See if they try to set up Costello. Mooney drives it into the hoop, gets blocked by Steve Cunningham. See if Chris Potts can get it off. He does, and it goes. And he got fouled. I don't think he called a foul, but he's no, giving him the hope. He's giving him the basket, okay. He certainly should have called a yeah. foul. <coughs> Good work by Milton to get that hoop to Good go. Strong finish. And it makes it 31-28. In favor of Milton at the end of the first, a very a very uh, fast and up and down first half. Yeah, Milton came right out of the blocks, 11-3. Wellesley called the timeout and kind of snuck back into it. Now Milton, uh, Wellesley actually went ahead briefly. Now uh, Milton took the lead back. And we'll be back for the second half shortly. All right, we are back for the second half for the Milton Wildcats nursing a three-point lead, 31-28 over the uh, Wellesley Raiders. Kerry Milton got off to a really hot start there. and 11-3 uh, like if I remember right, and uh, Wellesley called the timeout. On the other hand, you kind of had to know that Wellesley was going to start shooting a little better than they were. And their uh, play selection is a little bit better, too. They're looking for better shots. They came out in the beginning just shooting exclusively three-pointers, and uh, we're not knocking very many of them down. Hey, you always want to know that. That's a plus. Right. And we, and we still don't understand how that happened. Oh, really? Oh, Milton! Wildcats put the ball in play on the sideline. Good pressure by Wellesley here. They get it into Steve Cunningham. That was close to a five. Brian Travers goes strong, puts it up and gets hammered. Uh, Daryl Warren picks up the early foul. Yeah, they got a good piece of him now. It's good to see Brian go to the hole. With Wesley's defense, you're not going to get too many open outside jump shots, which I think is probably Brian's strong point. He's a great, he's a terrific outside shooter, but they're not going to give you time to line up out there. So make the ball fake, go by him, and yeah, take it in. That one quick dribble, sidestep him. Makes the first and the second. And Milton's hoping it back up to a five-point lead. Brian comes out in a one-man press. Costello. Across to Warren. And there's the pickoff by Chris Potts. Good hustle by Chris. Excellent effort. Now Wellesley never came back with their big man. For whatever reason, they've just decided to stay with a small lineup. Their six foot five inch. Uh, they got a wide open look in the lane there. Yeah. It's almost like they have a second offense they crank in with. But the cuts now, instead of being cut, cuts down the lane. 
Seems to be coming the across. Side or cuts across the lane from the weak side. But they're getting, uh, they're getting there. They're getting there before the Milton defense can get there. Shot is no good by Castell. Start making, start making those cuts down low too. You might get the uh, the big guys in foul trouble. Now they come out with the press. We were surprised we didn't see much press in the first half. Maybe they were just saving it for the second half to try to catch them by surprise. Uh, well, it was a nice exchange by Chris Potts and Steve Cunningham. Chris used the pick that Steve set and then picked Steve Roll to the hoop. And uh, Chris dropped in a nice little lap pass to him. That might have been one Steve will look back at. Yep. I think I might have taken shot that one. Oh, they did, he did have a couple guys on him. He knew Adam would be open. Adam just couldn't find the handle to it quickly enough. Rovito out top. Over to Warren. Costello. O'Neal. The jumper. No good. Long. Rebound Rovito. He's had, he's had many of their offensive rebounds. And Warren hits the jumper. Makes Milton pay for that one. On the other hand, the Milton yep. comes right back against the press. Good passing work by the two big guys. Very easy hoop. Easy hoop by Adam Donovan. Very fluid and very unselfish. Ball knocked loose. And it will stay. Brian Travers knocked, knocked it loose. Looks like Milton's going a little bit of a thin bench tonight. A couple of the guys you normally see in the game, Chris Benway and uh, Kevin Innocent, have not been in. Um, I'm <laughs> not sure why. Maybe they're sick. Ravito to Warren. Costello. Ravito with a jumper. Good. Buries it. I don't know what that call was. Oh. And it's 35-33 in favor of Milton. Milton should be able to pass over the top of this press. Brian Travers. Drops it into Steve Cunningham. Oh, nice look. Very good work there by Steve. Adam's so, guy left to help uh, on Steve and left Adam wide open and Steve cut him. I think he got a four Steve baseline on that one. Force him to the weak side. They let him go to the middle and too many things open up. Yeah, nice pass by Brian just to get it into the post. That's a, another jumper by Ravito. That's two in a row for him. Up ahead to Chris Potts to Marcus Burke. Up with the left hand, no good. Rebound Steve Cunningham, he gets fouled. Good work by the big guy once again. Well, so far Milton hasn't had much trouble with the press. I think they've been able to see over the top of it, make a long pass to the big man. Be interested to see how long uh, Wellesley stays in the press. Well, here comes the big man. McWilliams is back into the game. He didn't do much in the first half, but he was only in for a couple of three, four minutes before he picked up his second foul. Yeah, didn't get a whole lot of touches either. I think maybe they need him on the back line of the uh, of the press to stop the uh, Milton penetrations. <laughs> Milton comes out with a little three-quarter court press of its own now. Chris Potts gets a hand on it, knocks it loose, and it's going to be saved loose. It was like a pinball out there. Derek, yeah. Derek's down on a wireless mic. You give Derek a mic, you're in trouble. Derek, they don't have the 30-second clock here, so Derek has basically become the 30-second clock. But both Steve Cunningham and Adam Dunham altered that shot, and then Chris Potts worked hard on the off on the boards. Good drive by Chris Potts. Excellent. Now last year when Chris was healthy, you saw that all year, the slash to the hoop. Hopefully we'll see some more of that. This year with the injuries he's had between the bad back, the illness, the pneumonia, and the ankle, he's just never really had a chance to get going. Good job sealing off the baseline by Adam then. 
There's that cross court top of the key passing him. I, I spent years telling kids never to throw that pass, but uh, Wellesley seems to be a staple. They're getting away with it. Well, Milton is sagging a little bit towards, so it could be why they're getting away with it. Uh, good job by Marcus Burke to find Steve Cunningham. He's he probably the, about five for five from the floor now. I heard this. His father said, and I trust his father's keeping accurate stats, he was six for six from the floor. In the, the first, first half alone, yeah. He's got to have another three here. He's definitely leading the way tonight, huh? Costello. Oh, and they throw it out of bounds. That's a live ball. If somebody can hustle back and get it. It'll be Milton Ball as it goes out of bounds. Yeah, good defensive pressure there by Milton that time. Adam Donovan to put it in play. Good drop-in pass to Steve Cunningham. Good work by Adam Dunham, he can't get it to go. He gets his own rebound and gets that to go. Good work by the freshman there. Good bullish work. Those uh, soft three-quarter court press. Funny, in the first half, Wellesley shot almost nothing but three-pointers. Now they're not looking for this ball. I take that back. Another rebound for Steve Cunningham. Milton's opened up a 44-37 lead about five minutes into the second half. And another drive by Chris Potts. Good strong move again. Yep, you love to see that. That's going to be a quick timeout by Wellesley. That's got to make the ankle feel good. Yeah. It's going to make Chris feel good, too. That's 46-37 uh, in favor of the Milton Wildcats as they come out with a strong start to the second half here. Take another look at the cheerleaders. We finally got them grouped in one place where we can see them all. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like they're going to stay put. Excellent job. Nice crowd here tonight for the uh, for the game, the Bay State League game between uh, Milton and Wellesley. Most of them are underneath us here. We're up above the far side is the visitor side. Yeah, Milton, Milton seems to have adopted the uh, the side under the balcony here as their home side. It's closer to the door. It's a lot less work to get through. It's also closer. That's to the probably snack it. It's closer to the snack bar, exactly. We may be lazy, but we're not stupid. Picked off by Kevin Innocent. And he makes the hoop. Well, there's that energy that he brings into the game whenever he's there. Instant action there with that kid. My suspicion is he had to see, he was sitting out the first half. Maybe he missed some practice or something. Yeah, putting a little uh, double team on the uh, the wings here. But he is instant energy. He's got he's got great leaping ability. Anticipates the pass as well, and uh, is a he can finish. He adds a lot to both the offense and the defense. Bobby Ranton also back into the game. Oh, good look by Adam Dunham. I may be wrong, but I think Brian Travers has played every minute of this game so far, hasn't he? I believe he has. Both uh, Steve and Adam both got a shot rest in the first half. Well, he seems to be starting their offense a little further out, too. Looks like Coach Lopresti uh, wants Bobby Rand to try to shut down uh, Costello. That's some good help from Steve Cunningham there. Uh, too bad. They did a terrific defensive job, and then the ball just bounced loose. 48-39 in favor of Milton. Milton moves it around the perimeter. See if they try to get it down low. It's a point in the game when Milton could really uh, try to put this away. Bobby Randon with a three. Off the front rim, but right to Adam Donovan. 
and he gets it up and in. Created some space for himself there. Great offensive rebound. Looks like a flop on that one. No. I don't know if he fell, I don't think he'd ever get up. That's uh, Fiorello into the game. Rovito. Off the back iron, no good. Another rebound for Adam. Adam's Adam. getting up there high for those rebounds. Now Milton has a chance here to open up a nice, uh, comfortable lead for itself. Good hustle by Renton there, might have saved a couple of points. Unless he gets a hard foul here, I don't. I haven't seen any indication of it. No, I think he just gave him a two-shotter. Got a piece of the ball. He got out of his body too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he wasn't letting him get an easy hoop. Steve Cunningham tried to tackle 44 at the, the half court, but, right, but it didn't, good didn't work. Back. He got away for the uh, open field. <laughs> Chris Potts back into the game, and Brian Travers finally gets a deserved rest. Brian's going to have to eat double supper tonight. Levito makes the second. Into the game for uh, Wesley, um, number 33, Mooney. Seems to have taken the press off, unless they're going to pick up a half court here. I think when you want to get that ball down low, you really need a better uh, sort of a side angle rather than a flat angle like that. Drop it in from the wing. Wellesley's covering those inbound plays a little cleaner. Yeah, it took a little too long to develop that. Yeah, I think uh, Steve was in there a little yeah, too I long. Steve I thought he was going to put that one up quicker. That's actually one thing Adam needs to break himself up a little bit. He sometimes uses that spin move when he doesn't need it. I think he had it. Yeah. He had to put up right away. Good help by Steve there, closing up the lane. Shot no good, and Chris Potts comes down with a rebound. And Mills' defense has picked it up a notch here. There aren't any easy shots out there for Wellesley at the moment. Tough pass to make there. Got away with it though. Three-pointer by Chris Potts is good. And Chris looked at the lead to everybody 13. Back, the defense backed off of him, so he took what they gave him. This could be the biggest lead of the game, Jerry. Uh, Kevin Innocent almost had another steal. Should be Milton Ball. Good hustle by Kevin Innocent. You know, um, Costello had a, a hot stretch in the first half, but that was when he was mostly wide open to shoot. This half, he's gotten some three point shots off, but it's usually been with a hand in his face, and he hasn't had the comfort level that he had in the first half. The last few times, seems like they're just trying to penetrate down the lane, but the big guys have been uh, quick to close it up. Haven't seen those cutters come across the lane. The frustration foul by Steve Cunningham there. He missed the jumper and was a little angry at himself, and he tried to... Uh, a little too hard to get that rebound. That might be Steve's first miss of the game. Yeah, it's going to knock his uh, field goal average down into the 90s, huh? Stop, Bobby. 15, 15, Bobby. Now, Wellesley's got to find some offense here. Well, that's not going to do it. And the rebound by Adam Donovan. Come on, Kevin! Got to wait for the, uh, let's wait for the crew nice to come down here. Chris Potts looks like he's feeling it a little bit in the second half here. Nice little pick and roll there. Now we're down under seven finish. minutes here. Milton with a 13 point lead. Yeah. And a pick off by Chris Potts. And a hard foul there. Yeah, Kevin Innocent got him in trouble and he was trying to get his dribble back when uh, Potts blindsided him. And Chris Potts will go to the line to shoot, too. 
<laughs> Coach Lopresti uh, lobbying for a hard foul there, but he's not going to get it. Chris Potts to shoot two. A little short on the first. Milton still 53-40. We've been kind of stuck here for a while. There we go. 14-point lead for Milton. Six and a half to go here. Levito gets it to go. He's been most of their offense here. He really has. Yeah. He's kept them in the game, yeah. Good ball fake by Adam Dunneman. He just couldn't get it to fall. He's very patient down low. He is. He's got, uh, he doesn't go with one move. He usually goes with two or three. And he, and he works until he gets the shot he wants. He'll go to the line, shoot two. That ball just rolled out. So he's, got a, he's got a great, uh, great motion on the foul line. I don't think we can take any credit for that, can we, Ricky? No, I coached his brothers, not him. He's so good. <laughs> no. But Brian Travis coming back in for uh, Kevin Innocent. Gave the team a good spark there. Melton stays in their uh, three-quarter press. And Steve Cunningham almost gets a turnover. But he kicks it out of bounds, it'll stay Wellesley Ball. It's funny for a team uh, with a lot of speed and quickness, Wellesley has trouble with the press. They try to dri they're trying to dribble it a little too much. It helps having the tall guys in the middle of the pass it to them too, but they just don't have anybody. Nice move there by Costello. Yeah, good baseline move, and the uh, weak side didn't close it up quickly enough. 55-44. Be a possession foul for Milton. Haven't been many fouls this game left. One of the games we did, the game was out there. Where they were, they the kept, JV overtime yeah. game against Weymouth. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they couldn't put them all up on the board. They couldn't go that high. Went up to 19, I believe, yeah. Marcus Burke gets called on the against offensive him this time. It's a third foul on Marcus. Blocked by Adam Donovan. Good hustle by Marcus Burke to save it. Bobby Renton with a three, no good. And Marcus Burke runs it down. Let's see if they set up the offense. Oh, good ball fake. Nice pass. Excellent move by Adam. And Steve cutting right to the hoop on time. They work together very well. Now he may be the best passer on the team. And they both, as soon as they get the ball, they're both drawing a double team. So they're just looking for their teammate there. Shot no good. Steve Cunningham controls the boards. Good idea by Brian Travers. He had Marcus Burke up ahead, but he didn't have the angle on the pass. Adam Dunneman with a jumper. That's no good. Milton holding on to a 57-44 lead. 4.30 left to go here in the second half. Rosie really has no consistent offense in the second half. And in fact, except for that one stretch when Costello hit about four three-pointers, they really haven't had any consistent offense in the whole game. No, they really haven't. Bobby Rand was a little frustrated there. He got run over a couple of times yeah. off the ball and didn't get a foul called. And then... Uh, got run over at half court in the last possession. 
trying to uh, that we're trying to break the press. It happened twice. Yeah, the referees are looking down court already. He was looking around for the uh, the number truck that hit him. Shot is no good by uh, Warren. Chris Potts back into the game replaces Bobby Ranton as Bobby has three fouls now. Yeah, they really got to keep up their high energy here. Keep this uh, Wellesley team working for every basket. Second shot is good by Warren. Full court pressure again, yeah. Well, they wanted a sub in for the shooter, but the referees didn't bring him in. That's the old adage that, you know, just because the buzzer goes off, until the referee blows the whistle, the ball is still live. So Flynn was uh, trying to get into the game, but for whatever reason, the referees wouldn't let him in. That's a foul on uh, Wellesley. That's their 15 foul. And that's the fourth foul on Warren, so he's going to have to sit down. See if they get their inbounds play to work again here. Well, they had Steve Cunningham wide open. I know, but he's Nice block great by Adam. Block by Adam. He had a great outlet. To Marcus Burke for the lay-in. Excellent play by the freshman. Good finish by Marcus. By far the best game of the season for Adam Dunham. He's just playing up to the competition. It's only what his fourth game. Oh, there. Chris Potts almost had that picked off. And Costello hits the three-pointer, timeout called by Wellesley. 3.23 left to go here in the, uh, in the ball game. Milton Wildcats holding an 11-point lead, 59-48 over the Wellesley Raiders. See if Wellesley comes out with a little bit of aggressive defense here after the timeout. Yeah, they tried the full court pressure last time and... Uh, that actually, that helped us get the yeah. lead, actually. Yeah, the last time it worked for them. Last time it slowed down the Milton offense. at the team huddle around coach Sean Lopresti, assistant coach Christian Heisinger. Well, if Milton can just stay solid here in the last three minutes. Like I said, just got to keep up that energy level on defense. Make, make Wellesley work for everything. Control the boards. As expected, Wellesley comes out with an aggressive full court press. And it creates a turnover. Going right up with the three. Another block by Adam Donovan. And another great outlet. Marcus Burke can't get it to go. And it's going to be, uh, I think he was out of bounds. I think Adam Dunneman touched the ball when he was out of bounds. He had a foot on the line there. Those of us who are Patriots fans remember well that when you part of you is out of bounds, yeah. you're all out of bounds. It was just the opposite, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, one small part of him was out of bounds. Wasn't it? It was, I don't know, I can't remember. That was last year, two years ago, Charlie. Blocked by Marcus Burke. And uh, a little frustration foul there by Costello. It'll be the last possession foul for Milton. Blocked by Marcus. He got up high on that one. Well, Milton hasn't put any more points on the board, but they've run 45 seconds off the clock. <laughs> nice pass by Brian Travers. Excellent. Did well, nice job. Uh, pressure to zip right through the press that time. So I say, you got that big guy that you can pass to. And he found Brian cutting off him. 
Brian found Steve. Milton keeps up the defensive pressure. They don't want to foul though. So it's 16 fouls at this point. Marcus might have got a piece of that one. Tough to say, but it was an air ball. Good work, good work by Wellesley to save that ball off of Steve Cunningham, but they've only got four seconds left to shoot. Wellesley's going to have to get one off quickly. I guess they let that one count. It looked like it was very close, but it uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, lost the dribble there and just got tied up. Yeah, when you get to, I think at this point you might want to pull the ball out. Yeah, kill lead some climb off. I it looked like he was trying to find uh, Steve, but he just kind of lost the handle on it and got tied up. And Steve was open underneath. Milton well, keeps up the defensive pressure just to uh, try to run some, make Wellesley run a little time off the clock, getting the ball up court. Yeah, just defend against the three. Nice box Adam, Adam cleans Adam. the boards. How's the time for them to slow it down some? Minute and a half to go, and this one should be in the bag. And that was one of the few times the big guy to big guy connection just didn't work. Well, he's still showing a lot of uh, effort here. That might have been an ill-advised pass there. He's hustling down the court. He's going to get back in it, though. Two quick hoops by Wellesley. They cut it back to a single-digit lead with just over a minute to go. Now, I think at this point, that pass was probably not a good idea. You get possession of the ball. You want to run some time. Kill some clock. Looks great when it works, but you'd rather have killed 25 seconds. Cheerleaders are working hard tonight here. So if uh, Milt can bring this one home, that would uh, even them up at 2-2 for the season. Get them back up to 500. We've got a tough game coming up next Tuesday against Brookline. Brookline's expected to be a strong so team. So home or away? It's an away game. As I've said in some of the other games, so if you watch this and you'd like to come down and see a game, it's a good take. Absolutely. Tuesdays and Fridays are normally the, the days, but uh, check with the high school to see when the home games are. And if the boys aren't at home, then the girls are. Come down and see one of their games. Yeah, it's going to be either one or the other in the next four or five Friday nights. Community support is terrific for these kids. They all put in a lot of time and effort. You should come down and see them. Wellesley produces a jump ball. It's going to stay Milton ball. Good job by Brian Travers to slow it down. Uh, Wellesley's in the penalty now, so Marcus will be going one and one. Now Milton's going to have to hit some foul shots down the stretch here. That's the way to ice it. First one is short, and Adam Dunneman comes down with a rebound. Oh, Brian Travers finds Steve Cunningham all alone. All alone, yeah, had to take that one. Good, good vision by Brian. Two points is better than a few seconds there. Nice effort by the big guy, almost stole it. 
Chris will be going on the line now, one on one. Now Milton's pretty much owned the defensive boards all night. So if Wellesley, you know, if they didn't get hot and make a high percentage of their shots, they just weren't going to get enough yeah, second chance. I think unlike the first half, I don't, I don't remember Adam or Steve coming out at all this half. No, I think they went the, the entire half. distance. And it, it made a difference. Uh, Bobby Ritten came in, gave him some energy. Kevin Anderson came in, gave him some good energy. Helped out, gave these guys a rest. Chris Potts makes the first. 63-53 Milton. 37 seconds left to go here. Makes the second as well. Good comeback game for Chris Potts off the bad ankle. The veto from the corner is good. He could be uh, the high scorer for Wellesley. Steve was thinking dunk on that one, I think. Adam bothered that shot. And that should do it as Marcus Burke is just going to dribble out the clock. Good job by the Milton squad tonight. A nice win for the Wildcats as they even their record up at 2-2 two two with a 65-57 victory over the um, Wellesley Raiders. Strong efforts inside by both Steve Cunningham and Adam Donovan. I'm making a guess here, but I'd probably put Steve in for 25 or so, and Adam... He could be right up there. Adam didn't score as much, although he probably had... 12 or 14, anyhow. But he did a nice job of passing. He probably had about five or six nice assists, too. And several blocks. Good strong comeback effort by Chris Potts. Strong defensive effort by Brian Travers. Um, and he ran the show nicely out there. And then uh, good contributions from... Uh, yeah, the Mark bench helped out there. The bench Mark came in, gave him some uh, good defensive pressure. Marcus Burke had a nice day. Uh, Bobby Rand. Kevin Innocent, Corey Resends, good effort all around and a nice win for the Milton Wildcats, even him up the record at 2-2, two two, sending him into the book line game next week. And thanks again, Jerry, uh, for all your help, and Ricky Regan, Alamat Productions, and uh, Milton Cable Television, if you, if, Channel 8 and 22 on your... 617-698-0814. They need all the, any help you can give them, they're, they're happy to have it, so go down and volunteer. And uh, we'll look forward to doing some more games for you. We'll do a girls game on Tuesday night, bring that to you.